Hi, and welcome to Fonz and Porter's Essex Block of the Month with these lovely quilting treasures fabrics. I'm your host, Jenny K. Parks. You can check out my stuff on Jenny K. Quilts on my website and my YouTube channel. Today, episode number six, we're going to talk about our four patch border strip and the corners that go on that border strip. So let's jump right in. So we're making a four patch here, four patch in the center of the border strip. You can go back to video number, uh, video number one where I talked about our, a couple different methods for putting the four patch block together if you need a refresher on that. So I have my four patches right here. And now what we need to do to create the border strip is we need to make setting triangles so that, it, so that everything is right there in the perfect spot. First, let me make the smaller ones here. So the layout for the border strip, you notice the little green, uh, green, navy blue <laughs> patches are, um, they go in a line like this. Now, just be careful about that because I made a mistake when I was putting them all together myself the first time and I had them all going in the wrong direction. Don't do that. You'll end up ripping out a lot of things and you'll be covered with thread for a long time. So just from personal experience. Okay, so to make the setting triangles, we need to set both of the ends. And yours, just keep in mind, when you do yours, it'll be five long, but it's kind of hard to show here. I'm gonna work with the smaller patch so you can see, smaller setup so you can see a little better. So to make the setting triangles that are gonna go on my ends, I take that little square that's cut to the appropriate size, and I'm just gonna cut it in half this way. Now, because they have to go on the ends, sometimes trying to match up one of these on the ends, it's hard to figure out exactly where it should go, where the point is gonna be. If you put it like this, and kind of line it up with the point, like uh, line up the point there with um, kind of pointing right down the middle, that is helpful. But I find I get better results personally when I use this tool here, the triangle trimmer, and you put it on there, and I'm just gonna cut the very tip off of both sides. those out of the way. Cut another one here. This just helps you to line things up so much better than guessing, right? And we're all about improving our game, getting some greater accuracy to what we're doing. And little things like this really can make a difference, I'm telling you. All right. So line those up there so you can start to see how everything goes into place. So then you can center it on there much more accurately than you could the other way. Let me put the one here on the end. Don't fall off. Stay there. Okay. Now we need the ones that are going to go in these places as well. And for that, we take another square. And you're going to need to cut this twice, twice through there. Now, I want you to be careful because we still need to remember and treat the rotary cutter with, ex with respect. Remember, it's a rolling razor blade, and we need to be careful with what we do with it. So don't want any of this backwardsness or, or anything like that. You just don't want to do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut, I'm going to kind of put this at an angle here, and I'm going to cut once this way, and then I'm going to cut that way. So I'm not going back and forth. I'm not putting myself in a dangerous position. So once this way, don't move it. Just keep it nice and still. Oh, I shifted just a tiny bit. There, shift it back. And cut this way. So I'm still in complete control when I use the rotary cutter. I'm not bending over and, and contorting myself to try to get that to happen because you want to avoid those problems. Now this one, you could use a triangle trimmer on it, but 
it's pretty simple to match them up where they need to go with this one. So you see how they kind of set in place and build that border for us. There we go. Okay, so let me put some of these on for you and so you can see how the whole process works. I'm gonna take this here, fold that over, I'm gonna sew that on, and that one. And then I think, I think I'll sew this one on now too. I'm gonna center it there. And again, I'm just gonna be chain piecing What you think is the best way to do this is you have all of these, you can go through a stack pretty quickly. All right, then I just pick up my next one, go on to the next one. And if I have them laid out here in a stack, it's so easy just to, just to pick it up and keep going. I love that about chain piecing. Move that just a little bit, there we go. And I don't pin it, I just kind of hold them in place as they go. So the thing about triangles is you're gonna trim them one way or another, right? You're gonna have to trim off the dog ears or trim them beforehand like I did. So you just decide which one you, which one you really wanna do because they're gonna need to be trimmed. Okay, let's slide this all up here. And this is exactly how I do it when I'm at home. So I'm showing you kind of my whole, my whole process. I'll have everything spread out, but what I'll do is I'll have several layers. So I'm gonna have four of these, right, four borders. Um, so I'll have four, 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 four like that in each stack and just pick it up and go. We're gonna press out at this point I think that works just a whole lot better when you're trying to put this all together here. And again, I'm setting my seams. I think, like I said, this is really important with this whole quilt. If you get that, get everything to lay flat and behave itself. Lovely. Okay, I'll trim away the dog ears. And you can see how they, they start to fit into place. Oh, that, that one doesn't need to be trimmed. It's already nice and well done there. Okay, so then I'm just gonna sew on the other side here. But that. that and flip that. Now I know some people have a real fear of putting things on point and stretching this and we are having to deal with bias edges. So what I would suggest, if you're having any problems with the bias edges, any problems with it stretching at this point, I would suggest using starch or Mary Ellen's Best Press or something like that just to keep it in control if you're having issues with it. If you're gentle and like I'm not, you know, I'm not moving around, I'm not stretching it, I'm not doing anything like that. If you're gentle with it, you, you should be fine. You should be just fine. But Sometimes it doesn't always work out that way. All right, clip these apart. And I was never really one to put things on point and to try stuff like that, but I really, I really like the way it looks and it's not as nearly as hard as I thought it was gonna be. Okay, so that one is gonna go there. 
And I continue with this placement process the entire time. I'm telling you, it, especially if something's new, you don't want to get it turned around and, and make a mistake and have to rip it out. I'm going to clip that. Lay that one down. Then this one's going to go right there in the middle. Yeah, it is easy to get the stuff turned around upside down, backwards. Then you know it's time to put that little part in timeout <laughs> until it learns to behave itself and then and then she can go on. <laughs> all right. Now see how those kind of line up and they all go together? I, I think that's just really cool, really cool. All right, so I'm gonna put these end ones on, both ends, and then I'll put the whole border together. Now, I know sometimes it's challenging with the space, like you might have to uh, quilt on your dining room table and then people want to eat there at some point. I don't know, That's some people. But if you use, like stack up stuff on them, I've seen paper plates, people can stack it up on various paper plates and then they can kind of keep things separated and in the order that they want them to be without having to have a huge mess and then you can just take them and set them off to the side. Not everybody has big table space like I have here today. <laughs> Clip those apart. Look at that. Love it. And you can see when, when you look at the quilt, oh, I think I, I didn't quite press. Oh, I didn't quite press just right. All right, you see this? It's good that you guys see these things. Look at that. I didn't get that fold over far enough. That's not gonna match up exactly, but we're, we're gonna go ahead and go with it now because I'm busy working here. But those things happen. If I was doing this at home, I would, I would rip that out and I would fix that little part. Simple to do. So to put this together, we're just going to sew along in these segments, just one after another after another. And because I've pressed towards the dark, uh, uh, towards the setting seams on all of them, the setting triangles on all of them, then these two will snuggle in beautifully. And I know it seems, it seems a little weird doing things offset. I, and if you're new to it, you know, it's, it's not what you're used to, but it's gonna work out. I think it really gives a nice uh, dynamic look to it. And I told you how I check it and I feel it as I go along. When I'm doing this, I'm also paying attention to that because sometimes a machine can flip up that seam when you're not, you don't realize it and you might get a seam going in the wrong direction. So I still feel for that seam and make sure things are snuggled in like I want them to be. Okay. So you come and press. And again, you can see I've got a lot of seams here. If I'm not persuasive enough, if I don't do a good job pressing, I'm gonna run into problems like I did with that other one. And you're gonna get things that don't lay flat or things that are out of square by the time you're done. We want to avoid those things. And sometimes with this, I'll go from the top. I, I'm sorry, I'll go from the bottom and press it again just to make sure it's, it's in really good shape. Now, I want you to notice something here too. Sometimes the setting triangles, things can be a little bit off. And what you can do when you have this whole strip together is you can put your ruler on here. And I put it at a quarter inch mark. I put the quarter inch right there on my little corner so I make sure I have a quarter inch seam. 
and then I could, if I wanted to, trim that part off. I like to wait to do any trimming like that until I'm ready to put it all together because sometimes um, I, I may have gotten a little bit off. Sometimes I may need to block this, uh, stretch it out a little bit, and we'll talk about that when we get to the whole assembly, assembly portion. But um, I like to wait to trim until I'm actually at the point of assembly. You can go ahead and trim it before, but I just find that I'm a little safer <laughs> if I wait till the end, just in case, just in case I can be all ready. All right, so that's that portion of it. Then there's a blocks that go on the corners, a square and a square or diamond and a square blocks. And we covered those in video four. So if you need a refresher of how to do that, you can go back and check out video four. And they'll just go at the end. And we'll piece them together. They go at the ends on two of, on the top and the bottom ones, top and the bottom uh, four patch border strips. So that is it for today. Next time, we're gonna to go to the center star block, the medallion of our quilt. So I will see you there. I got lots of good tips. Thanks for joining me. This episode of Essex Block of the Month is brought to you by Quilting Treasures, Imagine and Create.